Hello everyone and welcome to a very important game that was played yesterday in the Bullet Chess Championship Grand Final between Magnus Carlsen and Hikaru Nakamura. The entire match was absolutely spectacular. If you have time to, uh, to, to watch it, uh, uh, most of you probably already have, but it's definitely worth watching. Uh, you can see by their, their ratings, 3-3-3-9 uh, and 3-3-4-3, uh, uh, that they are <laughs> evenly matched and this is the, uh, well... Uh, uh, I don't want to spoil too much, but one of the last or maybe even the last game that was played in the event and the current result is 16 uh, to 15 in Hikaru's favor. So Magnus needs a win uh, in order to bounce back. Now, uh, bear in mind, this is one plus zero bullet. Uh, there is no increment and uh, uh, I mean, players are playing such incredible chess uh, that it's um, it's uh, it's hard to believe that it's even possible to do this with so little time on the clock. So that being said, let's check it out. Magnus has the white pieces and he opens with e4. And Hikaru again opts for his uh, modern defense with pawn to g6 uh, uh, as he has in so many other games. We have knight to f3, bishop to g7, d4 and now pawn to d6. We have bishop to d3 and knight to f6. Players to castle, we have castles, castles, h3 and knight to c6. So all been played before, nothing new here. c3, we have e5 and rook to e1. We have rook to e8 and now knight b to d2. And here the top move is knight to h5, then you also want to bring your knight over to f4, you can play f5, you can uh, do a lot of stuff. d5 uh, has been played h6 is a known move but here we have pawned the b6 by hikaru and it is now as of move uh nine that we have a completely new game so magnus continues a uh, knight to f1 he wants to remaneuver the knight to g3 a6 uh sorry not a6 first bishop to b7 uh we have knight to g3 and now a6 we have bishop to e3 and now pawn to h6 just playing useful moves uh, queen to d2, developing the queen, connecting rooks, and now king to h7. We have pawn to d5, and now knight to b8, uh, remaneuvering the knight. And now, okay, uh, you, uh, you, you got rid of the knight, but now the knight can come to d7, then maybe to c5, and it's going to be very strong there. So pawn to c4, knight b to d7, and now pawn to b4, not allowing knight to c5. Uh, Hikaru challenges the b4 pawn, and Magnus defends it. We have captures, captures, and pawn to c5 now. So okay, you've prevented knight to c5, uh, but now... Uh, pawn to c5. We have captures, captures, and queen to c2. We have queen to c7. Hikaru also connects rooks, and king to h2. We have rook captures on a1, rook captures, and now rook to a8. Uh, offering a trade of rooks. Uh, Magnus goes for it, rook captures, bishop captures, and now uh, queen to a4, just putting pressure on that, bishop on a8, uh, bishop to b7, and now bishop to d2. We have knight to b6, chasing away the queen, queen to a7, and now knight to c8. Again, getting rid of the queen, queen to a4, and now queen to d7. Uh, Hikaru offers a queen trade, and Magnus accepts. We have captures, uh, sorry, not, uh, not doesn't accept right away. We have queen to a5, uh, and now bishop to f8. We have bishop to c3, no, no idea why I thought they, they actually traded queens. Uh, and now bishop to e7. And okay, it's a really uh, a mess, uh, a real mess of a position, especially for a time control where you have only one uh, minute on the clock. Uh, but up to this point, players spent almost uh, nothing. Like uh, Magnus spent some 19 seconds and Hikaru spent 14 seconds to reach this position. So they still have plenty of time. We have knight to d2 and now bishop to d8. That was the idea behind the remaneuvering of the bishop. Uh, queen to a1 and now knight to b6. Uh, there's even a line, I think it's in the Benoni defense, uh, where you fianchetto your, your dark square bishop, and then you uh, bring it all the way to d8. I think it's called like the, the great snake variation or something like that, as the, the path of the bishop reminds of a snake. Uh, but okay, uh, bishop to c2, we have queen to c8, and now pawn to f4. Opening up the position here, e captures, and now bishop captures on f6. We have f captures on g3 with check, king captures, and now knight to d7, putting pressure on the bishop here. So Magnus trades, we have bishop captures, queen captures, and now knight to f3. We have queen to e7, and queen to a7 now, putting pressure on the bishop, and it's very useful having the queen on the 7th rank, as absolutely everything uh, Hikaru has is on the 7th rank. So knight to e5, the queen also defends the bishop here, and now comes king to f2. 
uh, you're uh, probably wondering why just give up the, the C4 pawn. Uh, there's no good way to defend it. However you try, you're just going to get destroyed. To give you a funny line, uh, let's say you play bishop to b3, and it's such a silly move because your bishop was really beautiful here. Uh, knight captures on f3, g captures, and now queen to e5 with check, and you're just dead lost. It doesn't matter what you do. If king g2, just queen to b2 check, picks up the bishop, other moves uh, aren't uh, much better. And also once uh, the bishop uh, is uh, removed, the queen also guards the bishop on b7 so there's that uh, so king to f2 by magnus and now hikaru snatches up the c4 pawn bishop to d3 and now knight to b2 attacks the bishop we have bishop to a6 so hikaru will lose the bishop on b7 that's why uh, one of the reasons why magnus allowed this uh, but hikaru says not a problem knight to d1 with check king to g1 and now queen captures on e4 with check magnus wins the bishop queen captures on b7 and now queen to e3 with check king to h2 queen to f4 with check we have king h1, knight to f2 with check, only move king to g1, and now Hikaru picks up the h3 pawn, also with check. So g captures, and now queen to g3 check first. You could also capture, but this way you're gonna pick up the knight with check. King f1, queen captures on f3 with check. King to e1, queen e3 check, bishop back to e2, and now, of course, you will use this diagonal to uh, uh, checkmate the white king uh, as long as you want. So queen to c1 with check, king to f2, queen to f4 with check king e1 queen to c1 with check king f2 queen to f4 with check king to e1 and everyone thought that hikaru was just gonna force a perpetual uh, here because he's uh, leading the match and it would definitely go his way but he actually played c4 here he wants to continue actually being down a piece and uh, magnus should just draw this there's no no questions asked here you just pick it up and if queen captures queen captures on f7 with check and it's a draw however after c4 magnus played queen to b6 I have no idea what it does. It uh, even, uh, you know, it, it does kind of look like a mouse slip, but I don't think it was. Maybe Magnus saw something. If you guys have any idea behind queen to b6, I'm, I'm, I'm out. I mean, why would you move your queen away from uh, from this beautiful 7th rank? And it's not like it does anything here. It doesn't guard anything. Oh, the, the queen can still deliver check on c1. Like, okay, maybe if queen to g3 check, you can bring the queen back. But again, it, it just looks really weird. So I have no idea why he played it, but Hikaru just played pawn to c3. And now Magnus is dead lost. There is no way to stop the pawn, uh, and that's pretty much it. He played queen to c6. Now, okay, you prevent a pawn to c2, but now queen to d2 check. We have king f2, pawn to c2, and there is no stopping c1 queen. Uh, Magnus did play queen to c7 in order to capture on f7 to force uh, some sort of a perpetual, but now Hikaru just played queen to f4 with check, and he was in this position on move 58 that Magnus Carlsen resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, he, uh, his king is in check, the, the f7 pawn is defended, so you don't have to worry about that, and once the king moves, doesn't really matter where, you also bring a queen into the game, and now the queen from f4 guards the queen on c1, and also the pawn on f7. So, absolutely spectacular, it was uh, quite uh, quite a thriller, the entire the entire bullet chess championship was quite a thriller, I mean, uh, they, they both played some incredible chess, Hikaru did uh, seem more, more dominant, as Magnus also dropped out, and he got back into the... Uh, the, to the uh, you know, main uh, event, and then he uh, got to face Hikaru in the grand final, but it was always, Hikaru was the one always leading the match, and Magnus was always trying to catch up, trying to catch up, and then in the end, he just couldn't, uh, Hikaru wins by a, a two-point margin, he takes it, I believe, 17 to 15, no, uh, 16 to 14. So absolutely incredible uh, by Hikaru, and uh, uh, something that Magnus said after the match, I'm just gonna uh, read it to you as a uh, uh, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to mess anything up. But he really, really praised Hikaru for for how strong he was. Uh, this is what Magnus said. I played some bullet over the years, but the thing is, I never played Hikaru much, and I have seen Hikaru crush everybody else. But I always thought that I matched up decently with him. And okay, he did uh, match up decently with him. Uh, my main strength, which is also Hikaru's main strength, is that we are simply better at chess than others. Sounds like you know a bold statement, but you know it's it's also the truth, and that. Um, uh, uh, we can also make good moves more quickly. At some point, he was playing a lot faster than I was. Uh, he was playing much better, seeing all kinds of tactics. That was a massive reality check for me. And at, the point, and at that point, I was thinking, oh, okay, uh, he's just that much better than I am. I was like, yeah, this guy is a beast. Uh, and also, he says, I'm extremely impressed. I always knew that he was good. I always thought that he was somewhat better than I was in Bullet, but, I th uh, but uh, that he was like uh, this much better, I did not realize. It's insanely impressive. 
impressive. And also Magnus says, I think he is certainly better. Maybe at my best, I'm like good enough that it's not shock if I win against him. So there you have it. Uh, a few words uh, from the uh, from the world champion Magnus Carlsen, or rather former world champion, uh, former world classical champion, but he is world champion at other formats. So I, I guess it's still okay to call him world champion. Uh, but yeah, a big congratulations to Hikaru on winning uh, winning it all. He wins the grand final. He beats Magnus in the finals, and uh, I mean, absolutely, absolutely incredible stuff. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you haven't seen it, do watch all of the games. I mean, it's absolutely, absolutely uh, stunning to, to see uh, all of these moves being played with uh, with basically zero time on the clock. It's, I mean, uh, unreal. Uh, I would like to thank BulletChessThriller.com, Utsa Farak, uh, Gage Wedland, uh, Gary Chomuk, and Rod Hill for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens uh, in the chess world. Thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.